Welcome back to Auto Scoop with Adam Goldfine and Joyce Littell. Welcome back. Make sure you give us a call, 404-607-1407, if you have a question about workers' compensation or an accident that you have been in and you don't know the answer to a lot of questions that you get, well, now is the time to call. I'm were, telling you. Were you not amazed three and a half times? Yes. Don't you love that? Oh, it's a done deal with me. But you know, the he thing... He can tap me and I'm calling But it. But here's the thing, back to <laughs> the, the comment before, how many people don't know it? Right. And, and that's the point that if I can get some of these words out there, it's no different than how do you find the right car for yourself or how do you know about negative equity? How do you know how much to finance? So many of us get hurt on the job and are hurt in accidents that I think it's important that, that we put it out there. 42,000 people a year are killed. You know, three and a half million people are injured. Now, I, I would assume a big part of your practice is from injuries on the job, not only personal injury. Claims. Absolutely. It's about 50-50 between personal injury and workers' comp. And then we also do Social Security disability. And a lot of our catastrophic workers' comp claims become Social Security disability claims as well. When they are unable to get back into any job in the U.S. economy, then they can be eligible for both. Do, how much do people recover? I mean, what you know? give me an idea of, let's say, um, a case that you might have settled. So somebody can get an idea. What are we talking about here? Well, um, one case uh, that comes to mind was involved a painter, and uh, he was up on a ladder and he was doing his thing. He was a couple of flights up, and mm. he fell. Uh, he his main injury was a fracture to his leg, and he also had a back injury. Usually, those are things that you know. Hopefully, he would recover from and get back to work. Unfortunately, he developed developed a neurological disorder called RSD syndrome, and that is a very very bad neurological disorder that you typically. Hear that? What is that? It, well, it, it basically is from what doctors have told me when I've deposed them is uh, where the body gets the, the nerves and the communication is it gets off track and basically the body continues to think there's a fracture even when they're hidden is kind of a, a layman's. And, and the trouble is that it can, it can become worse over time. It can spread to different parts of the so body. So the body still thinks there's a break. Mm -hmm. And you can begin to start having problems in other parts of the body. So it just really throws the whole neurological system off. In that case, it was a very sad situation because his job and providing for his family was, as it is for most people, was just unbelievably important to him. And his wife was able to have a job that she enjoyed that didn't make a lot of money working in a pet shop because he was able to pay the bills with what he did. It killed him when he was never able to go back to work. How much did he get? We were able to get four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars on that case, uh, and you know that's in the comp world that's a lot of money. But in you know when you're trying to put your life together, you know if you're never going to go back to work, it isn't. But he did have Social Security disability to cover his medical, you know, for life after uh, the Medicare set aside money was spent, and then he had that income as well. So that was in the comp world. That's a, a huge recovery. But there is no pain and suffering, and there really, you know, there are just three benefits that the settlement's going to be based on: the future medical, the future income benefits, and in a catastrophic case, that's going to be lifetime benefits, and then your permanent partial disability benefits, which are loss of use of your body. How long did that take? That took a long time. Uh, he, you know, he. I think he was probably off work for three years or more. Wow. Uh, before that settled. Really? A lot of times you can't settle a case that large until you know for sure that they're going to have, they're going to be accepted for, uh, you know, Social Security disability, so they'll have the Medicare there to pick up the slack yeah. when so the So you're doing a lot of work for these people all along the way. And you really do get to know them personally because you are, it's, you're helping them try to figure out is it best to settle, is it best not to settle, and then you got to put it together where they're going to be able to try to get back into the workforce if possible and try to put the pieces of their life back together but it can be very very challenging we have a we have a call that's uh, online let's go to um, powder springs sherry you on auto scoop with Adam Goldfine and our guest Richard Griffin what is your question hello sherry yes go ahead yes I want to know how long does a work comp case stay on your record how long does a worker comp case stay on your record uh, well, it's going to always be at the board. The State Board of Workers' Compensation is going to always have that on file so that if, I guess, if the question is if someone researched down at the board based on, you know, prior claims, that's going to be there. If you've ever had a claim that you filed with the State Board of Workers' Compensation and you need to do that, uh, again, that's where that statute, filing that notice of claim, you know, you have to do that to preserve your claim. So that's going to be indefinitely if some, something at the board. If somebody wanted to talk to you about something like that or they weren't sure they wanted to file a claim or 
whether it was better to file a claim or just pursue the personal injury. Is that something you can go over with them and kind of give them a, an evaluation for free? Absolutely. It's for free and it's something that I highly, highly recommend because, you know, taking your call right now, it's very limited in the depth that we can, you know, get into the facts of each case. And if you call, you know, you can get, we'll make sure we go through all the facts and explain all of your rights and answer your questions. Another thing that you can do, uh, you can call the 404-303-8400 number or you can visit the website at injuryatlanta.com. There, uh, there are two different forms that you can fill out to submit your question to me and I'll get right back to you. Uh, another thing you can do is you can email for a free report that will summarize the different injury claims. And that's something that's free and you just have to email my firm at freereports at griffinlawfirm.net. Now, free report at griffinlawfirm.net. Do you remember the last time he was on and we talked about the, uh, lo uh, you know, um, the loss of sex, mm -hmm. you know, of the spouse mm -hmm. and, you know, all the different types of recovery? <laughs> Why are you laughing at that one? Because huh? I can't. Or, or I guess we can call it loss of consortium, right? <laughs> right. Loss of sex. Okay. <laughs> what amazes me is the, all the different types of recoveries that you're entitled to. And, right. and that's the part that if we kind of ran down, can you run down them really fast and like, look guys. Let's kind of cut all the jargon. If you got hurt in a claim, here are some of the things you could get. Kind of like whiz through them if you can. Okay. All right. On a worker's comp claim, you're entitled to your income benefits, which are your lost wages, your medical treatment paid for as long as you're going to worker's comp doctors, your impairment rating, which is a rating the doctor would give you for the loss of use of your body. Uh, if you're involved in a car wreck that involved a, a, um, a negligent third party, you'd have a personal injury claim, you'd have a property damage claim, and you'd have a diminished value claim. All right, there's a whole bunch more. You know what? Stay with us. We'll be back. I got a couple more for Richard. See, Adam, you were asking uh, Richard about thumbs and hands and eyes and all. You know what's important to me? Voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on the radio six days a week. So if I were to something were to happen and I lose it, I mean, that's it for me. What happens? What happens? How much is the voice worth? Well, the, you know, the voice isn't, uh, the statute provides for certain parts of the body and how many weeks you get paid income benefits uh, to compensate you for that. And it's voice based on the, the list? Voice is not on the list. What? Um, uh, you get zero, baby. Uh, Richard going to find me some money. <laughs> yeah. I know he will. <laughs> I have no doubt. I mean, that's no, my employment. I mean, and that, but that's the key. That would go back to the employment or, or what caused Hello. it. And now, like, for example, I let's can say, see him get millions for this voice. Well, what <laughs> happened if so, there was some negligence and she lost her voice because of the negligence, even though screaming it's not on you. the workers' comp, right, <laughs> screaming at me, right. would she be limited or would she be able to go past the workers' comp? If there was negligence involved, then that opens the door to a lot of things. The pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life, if it affected your income. You can't go, ooh, ooh, Jay. <laughs> yeah, it, awesome it, consortium on that one. It's back to the uh, concert <laughs> yeah, no. uh, pianist who hurts their fingers and can't perform anymore. Well, if you are, you know, your voice is what makes you be able to do this job. Now, from a workers' comp standpoint, uh, arguably, I guess, if it limited, you know, if you had a work restriction saying you couldn't speak and you had to do some other job, we might be able to get income benefits based on the loss of income called temporary partial disability to make up the difference. But let's, let's simple it down. What's a finger worth? Uh, well, a finger, it depends on which one. You know, the thumb is worth 30000 if it was completely severed and you had the maximum 500 So they really have dollar what amounts? I want to show you. They do. Now, not, that doesn't mean that every thumb is worth that. If you earn less money, your thumb is worth less. So it's... Uh, that is crazy. It's Get based on, uh, you know, if it's a... What percentage of the what, loss of use... What's an ear worth? Well, an ear. Let's see. Uh, I don't normally handle ears, but uh, it looks like if you lost 100% of one ear, that would be, of the hearing, that would be, if you had $500, uh, 500 as your maximum, would be 37500 if it was 100% loss of hearing. What if you lost both eyes? Both eyes would be 150000 Now, out. that might actually, that would create yeah. a potentially catastrophic claim. So these are just your benefits for permanent partial disability loss of use. Is there more money for catastrophic claims? Well, they are. They are. And the biggest reason is because uh, you are limited to 400 weeks. And I'm throwing out a lot of information. Again, that reporter, call me and you know, we'll be glad to talk through it. What I'm telling you is just information, but you need to hire an attorney to make sure that your rights are protected. But uh, normally, you're, you only have 400 weeks of eligibility, even if you're out of work. 
for getting the income benefits. If you have a catastrophic claim, instead of that 400 weeks or 7.6 years, I, it's your lifetime. Let's try to roll back a little bit, okay? Because I'm like, I don't know about you, I'm swimming in Blown all this away. stuff. <laughs> okay, basic stuff. If I'm driving my car and I get into an accident, whether I'm going to work or not, I can call you for a regular accident, right? The property right. damage on the car, right. and if I get hurt, I can say, Richard, I was hurt. Correct. That has nothing to do with workers' comp, but I can call you. Right. And you can call me at no cost, and we'll talk about it, and I can tell you all the different claims that you may have. Right. So if you've been in an accident, here's the first deal. You're in an accident, call them, right? We got right. that one covered. Are we good? Right. Okay. <laughs> now, we're doing something at work and get injured. You're saying I also get additional money under workers' compensation, and that comes in three areas. Right. That's what I heard. I heard income. Mm -hmm. Right. You had medical expenses, mm -hmm. right? And then you had, like, I guess if I lose body parts. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Now, you also said something that was very interesting, and that was if you're really not represented by an attorney, you may not, A, get all that you're entitled to, you may not get all the medical uh, benefits and help that you're entitled to, and then they'll start squabbling amongst the, themselves you got paid from him, so I'm not going to pay you. Right. right. So you end up really getting less. You do, absolutely. I, I, I've had phone calls where um, people said, well, I was off work and I never got my income benefits. And so we've had to get involved. Usually we can get the adjuster to do it if they're completely off work. If they're on light duty, then that's usually a hearing issue that would have to be uh, litigated. But we help them make sure that they're getting the medical treatment that they are entitled to under the law, getting those All lost right. wages. We even had someone uh, who called me not long ago and they were getting half of what their weekly income benefit should have been. Mm -hmm. They were getting it, but they were being underpaid and had been underpaid for eight months. Good out of here. So the other two things I want to make sure I get out are you'll look at anybody's claim for free. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you'll give them information. Yes. And it's confidential. Yes. Okay. You guys hear that? Now, the other part is you basically work for free during this entire time and only get paid if they get paid. That's correct. It's a My contingency kind of fee. Yeah, <laughs> if, if there's no recovery, then I don't get paid. That'd be like a remote. We'll pay you if the people call. Okay? <laughs> You'd make a lot of money. I'd probably go broke. Hello. Okay? They I'm like make you. them call. You make them call. <laughs> How do we make them call him and get help, I guess is the question. you got to give the number okay. several times. 404 303 8400. 404-303-8400 or toll-free. Give it one more time, though, the, seriously. The toll-free number as well is 877-303-8440. That was 877-303-8440 for the toll-free number. And you had, it was InjuryAtlanta.com. InjuryAtlanta.com. Right. And easy. you can go there, and there are two forms. One is, what is my case worth? And one is, I have a legal question that you want to ask me, you and know, I will get back to you promptly. For the free-free. Free, for free. I like that. I like the question though. What's my case worth? Yes. You know, it's like a lottery ticket. Hello. What is your case worth? And here's the thing. Think about it. How many people do we know that have slipped on a chair, slipped on a hall, sli you know, slipped going to their car, you know, or fell down, you know, tripped on a flight of steps. Um, it you happens. You in the studio. I mean, yes, it happens. All the time, right? All the time. All the time. And people are probably getting shortchanged everywhere. Mm hmm. That's why he's One of the here. things you also That's brought up it. is that oftentimes if you have a worker's comp and a personal injury claim, the worker's comp carrier, if you do get a settlement they, without an attorney, it's unlikely, but if you get an attorney and get a settlement, one of the things that I'm going to do is try to keep them from taking money out of your personal injury settlement or at least limit what they can take. So you get like two, not just yeah. one. Right. There would be two separate recoveries, but oftentimes the workers' comp carrier is going to have a subrogation claim, which is a right to get some money back for what they paid on the comp claim well, yeah, we're in against your personal injury. <laughs> oh, sorry.